Sidereus Nuncius by Galileo Galilei Starry Messenger Why was Galileo's 1610 book so important? Let's break it down. First, his book, Starry Messenger, is referenced in nearly every history book and documentary on the history of science. It's also central to the story of the Renaissance and the intellectual shift from the dark Middle Ages to modern science. I'm Michael Allen Prestwood, and this video is a deep dive into one of my one-minute hot topics available at touchstonetruth.com. Both draw content from Chapter 21 of 30 Philosophers. To see more like this, please like and subscribe. In Chapter 21, as part of telling the story of the scientific revolution of the 1600s, I use the story of Copernicus and Galileo to frame the birth of modern cosmology. Okay, let's break down Galileo's observations. First, a quick timeline. In 1543, at age 70, Copernicus published his book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres. He wrote it decades earlier, but only published it when on his deathbed. He died the same year. In 1608, Hans Lipperhey of the Netherlands is the one often credited for extending optics of his time and inventing the telescope. Initially, this 3X telescope was used for long-range surveys and military tactics. The next year, Galileo designed and built his own 3X telescope, then improved it. For his 1610 book, he built a greatly improved 20X telescope and pointed it to the heavens. He published his observations in his book, Starry Messenger. At the time, he was already a believer in Copernicus' sun-centered model of the solar system but the world needed proof. Galileo is the one who first confirmed what Copernicus had theorized decades earlier, that Earth is not the center of the universe. By the way, many earlier cultures understood the Earth was a globe, including the ancient Greco-Roman culture. This is one of the reasons that the Middle Ages is sometimes referred to as intellectually dark. It systematically and purposely dimmed the light of knowledge in favor of religious propaganda. Okay, so, what were Galileo's four key observations that shook the world? First, he observed the moon. Galileo saw craters and mountains, proving that celestial bodies weren't perfect spheres, as once believed. Second, he watched Venus. And just like the moon, it had phases. This was undeniable evidence that Venus orbits the sun, contradicting the Earth-centered model. The third thing he pointed his telescope to was Jupiter. Perhaps his most revolutionary observation during this year, he discovered four moons orbiting Jupiter. This meant not everything revolved around Earth. The heavens did not rotate around a flat Earth. The universe was more complex than people of his time had imagined. His book, originally titled Sidereus Nuncius, became one of the most important scientific works ever published. It helped ignite the scientific revolution of the 16th and 17th centuries. Two years later, in 1612, Galileo jumped into the middle of a controversy over sunspots. Some argued the sunspots were planets, but Galileo convincingly proved they were not. That year, he published a series of letters which became a book in 1613. This portrait of Galileo is from that 1613 book. The sun, the most revered object in the sky, was thought to be flawless. Galileo's discovery of sunspots was shocking, proof that even the heavens change. To be clear, Copernicus's earlier book had already suggested a sun-centered system, but Galileo's telescope provided the proof. By the way, the most powerful telescope Galileo built had a magnification of about 33x, that's roughly the same as a modern 1030x50 binocular. With 50 millimeters lenses, these binoculars can magnify objects anywhere from 10 to 30 times their size. If you get a pair, you'll be seeing the night sky much like Galileo did, but with modern glass that's far clearer and sharper than anything he had. Galileo, the father of modern observational astronomy, set the stage for what we know about astronomy today. A small book, but a giant leap for human understanding. This content is from 30 Philosophers. Chapter 1 sets up the 5,000-year journey 
through our best ideas. Along with chapter 1, chapters 20 and 21 contain the bulk of the science in the book. It shows how philosophy evolved into science and how it fits within the story of human thought. I hope you enjoyed this video from my Touchstone Truth channel. For more on philosophy, science, critical thinking, and history, visit touchstonetruth.com.